Hello and welcome to this video on three phase. I've just done a quick Google search here to look up some images of both single phase and three phase circuits. So first of all for a single phase circuit you can see here we've got a fairly simple circuit that's come up uh, which is, is known as a single phase circuit because it has one uh, AC power supply which feeds a single or, or multiple loads and by now if you've been watching our videos we're more than familiar with simple AC circuits like this but this term three phase means something slightly different so if I search for a three phase circuit as I've done here I end up with a few different um, results that resemble circuits that have first of all three power sources and these are connected to uh, three separate loads, a three phase load in this instance. You can see from this animation that I've found that we have now three separate currents but if you look carefully at the animation itself you can see that these three currents are out of phase with one another and by which I mean they're not quite synchronized, they're all sort of moving if you look at the, the sort of uh, the movement of the currents themselves, they're moving back and forward first of all as we'd expect for an AC circuit or an AC current alternating in its direction but they're not quite in sync with one another they're all sort of moving at different times if I go back to this diagram here we get a sense as to why we have another three phase circuit here with three power sources and three separate loads this one also has a neutral connection which we're not too bothered about for today but if you look at the notation on this particular diagram you can see that the angles of these particular voltages are set apart from one another. One of them is at zero degrees, one of them is at 120 degrees, and one of them is at 240 degrees. In this video we're going to look at why this is the case and why it's important and helps us to gain some efficiencies from three phase circuits as opposed to simpler single phase circuits. So to do this I want to use Microsoft Excel to try and illustrate the uh, importance of three phase and how we can actually get some benefits from setting up a single, uh, sorry, a three phase circuit in the manner that we've seen in the diagrams there. To begin with, I'm going to start by producing a single phase waveform. And to do that, uh, I'm going to create a column for degrees, and that is going to go up in uh, 10 degrees at a time, all the way up to 300 and 60 degrees. So I'll just drag that down there and hopefully that will populate itself. So we've got a 360 degree uh, first column there and that's going to be the x-axis on our diagram because we know that a waveform uh, goes from 0 to 360 degrees. And I'm going to create a voltage and we'll say that this particular voltage, uh, let's say it's it's got a, um, a peak of 240 or, or an amplitude of 240 volts and it's a sine wave so it's 240 sine of our degrees now Excel prefers to work in radians rather than degrees so another little command I'm going to put in here is to convert that cell to radians so I've got 240 sine of our degrees here which have been converted to radians and what I'll do is just double click on that little corner there to copy that down so if I plot this first of all, just as a, as a quick uh, as a quick graph, just to visualize what we've got going on here, we should have something that looks like this. We've got our AC waveform that extends from 0 to 360 degrees. I'll get rid of that now because I'm not, I'm not too interested in voltage in this particular video. I want to talk more about power. And so I'm going to add an extra column here for power. And the formula to calculate the power is, in this case, V squared divided by R. I don't know what the resistance is in my hypothetical um, value here, but let's say that it's 100 ohms, if there's a load of 100 ohms connected to my AC power supply. So my formula would be V squared divided by R. And if I actually put this into my formula uh, to calculate, it would begin with equals v squared divided by r and let's say that it's a hundred ohms for the sake of this example and so now I have a column for power 
Let's plot both of these now, just using uh, a scatter graph for the purposes of this quick example. And we'll see a couple of things. First of all, we've still got our waveform in blue, which is our voltage, which is our sine wave extending from 0 to 360. But we've also got this new waveform for power. And I want to make a couple of uh, mentions about what, we've, what we see here for this, this power waveform. First of all, the power is always positive. And we'd expect this in any purely resistive circuit. Um, if we have reactive elements, reactances in our circuits, such as inductors and capacitors, we'll actually get the power dipping into the negative, which is actually sort of lost or, or wasted power we can think of. Um, for a purely resistive circuit, we'd expect to see the power always positive, so that's a good thing. Um, we talk about more about negative power or reactive power in some of our other videos, but for this purpose, we're going to keep things nice and simple. One of the downsides of this single phase uh, power waveform here is that the power is inconsistent. We get a bit of power and then we see nothing. And then we get a bit more power and then nothing. And so the power delivered to the load is actually uh, not consistent. An illustration of this might be in the form of a light bulb or, or fluorescent lamp. We see here that the power is delivered in bursts of sorts. And if anyone's ever used a slow motion camera or such like to, to video um, a room that's that's powered by fluorescent lamps, you'll see the flickering of the lamps. And that's due to this problem here. We have this inconsistent delivery of power that's delivered in short bursts. For most intents and purposes, when we're sort of looking at a room just with, with, with the natural eye, we don't notice this flickering. Um, and in most applications, it doesn't really bother us. But here's a downside of single phase AC. We have this inconsistency in the power. So I'm going to get rid of this and instead compare it to three phase and do something similar. So rather than just have one voltage, I'm going to have three voltages, uh, V1, V2, and V3. And I'm going to set these voltages up very similarly to what I've done here. So here we have um, 240 multiplied by sine of the radians of our degrees column. And likewise, I'm going to have 240 multiplied by the sine of the radians of our degrees column again. So what we should, oops, I've made a mistake there. I'll accept that. So we should have three identical columns as it stands. But if you remember, going back to our, our diagram, uh, which one was it? I think it was this one. Our three voltages are not identical. If we look back to our animation here, uh, this is from Wikipedia, you can see that the three waveforms are out of sync and this diagram gives us a little hint as to why and it comes down to these degrees 0, 120 and 240. These are examples of phase shifts in our waveform and so when we go back to our Microsoft Excel our three columns here are not identical the second and third have encountered a phase shift and so if I can represent that in our formulas here V2 is going to be shifted by 120 degrees compared to V1. If you remember, V1 in this case starts at 0, 10, 20, 30 degrees, and so forth. V2 is going to start at 220, uh, sorry, at 120. V3 is going to start at 240. So I'm going to make an alteration to my second and third columns here for voltage by adding 120 to the formula and I'll copy that down to all values just by double clicking on the corner there. And likewise for V3 I'm going to add 240 to that column um, to, the, to the formula. So now this particular formula is not calculating just the degrees column, it's, it's calculating based on whatever the degrees column was plus 120 and likewise here 
the degrees column plus 240. So now we have three waveforms that are separated by 120 degrees each. I'll show you what I mean by plotting a graph again. The reason 120 degrees is used is because if you think about our waveform, which extends from 0 to 360, we can split that evenly into um, sections of 120. In fact, if I alter my uh, axis here, what we could do is change the major axis to 120 degrees, and it's going to extend to 360 degrees. So if I make those changes, hopefully it becomes a little bit more obvious. So here we have our waveforms that have been shifted by 120 degrees, and so they're now evenly separated, extending still from 0 to 360. So, by all in appearances, it looks like we've just made the problem three times worse. Now we have three waveforms that are all uh, separated from one another, but hopefully we're going to illustrate why this is a very useful and efficient method of electrical transmission. To do that, I'm going to get rid of my graph again just for a second because I want to add, just like I did before, power columns P1, P2, and P3, the power from each of our three phases. Let's imagine that these three voltages, just like in our diagram here, if I go back to this one, our three voltages we've now set up 120 degrees apart. Let's suppose that they're all connected to three loads, a three-phase load. And let's again, for the purposes of example, say that each of these loads is 100 ohms. So we go back to our power column here, and we want to say, remembering that power is V squared divided by R, we'll say that our P1 is V1 squared divided by 100, 100 ohms being our example. Likewise, P2 is going to be V2 squared divided by 100 ohms, and P3 is going to be V3 squared divided by 100 ohms. And so if we again copy those columns down, we now have three power columns. Let's now plot another graph um, of the same type. And we have something that's starting to look very nasty. We have um, our three voltages that are here, the red, uh, sorry, the blue, the gray, and the sort of orange color. Their voltages are still there. And now we have three power uh, waveforms as well, the yellow, the blue, and the green. So again, we seem to have just made the problem three times worse. Now I have three powers, and each of those powers is also inconsistent. Each of those three loads is going to receive this sort of pulsing energy. The, 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 the blue um, is, is oscillating between zero and a peak of around, uh, well, I can hover over there, um, 576 by the looks of it. Likewise, for the yellow and the green. So this is not quite the, uh, the, the, the final result. The last thing that I want to do, which is where three phase really becomes very interesting and useful, is to work out the total power. And to do that, very simply, I'm going to add together, using the sum function in Excel, I'm going to add together the three powers in this particular um, row here. And I come to a total of 864. The very interesting part is when I copy this down for all, you'll see that the power's consistent. So finally, if I plot my last, and I promise it will be the last graph here, we will get something that looks like this. I'll make that a bit bigger. We have our three AC voltages producing three sets of inconsistent pulsing power but the very useful fact is that the total power at any point gives us a constant. And so here we can see that the power delivered to the three phase load is not pulsing. We get constant power delivered all the time. Why is this useful? Well, first of all, 
Let's think of an example such as a three-phase motor, where the three loads are not necessarily three resistors like in our example, but might be three field windings that create a rotating magnetic field that drive the motor. In the instance of an AC motor, single phase, that power would be inconsistent, and therefore the motion of the motor would be inconsistent. Here we have constant power delivered to the motor. And that means that the motion of that motor is going to be much smoother, much more efficient, fewer vibrations, less wear and tear. And so we get a much more efficient transmission of power by using a three-phase um, supply. The same applies to electrical transmission and overhead transmission lines. When you see overhead transmission lines between pylons, they very frequently use three phase for their transmission. Because of similar efficiencies that a three phase system affords, we can deliver constant power to the load. So I hope this illustration has been useful to show how three phase is more efficient and provides constant power rather than the inconsistency of single phase where we get this pulsing power with frequent uh, drops to zero.